G'day, I'm Ash. And I know I'm really late to the Lightning F6, but I've only recently just got it. I've been starting to play it a whole lot, and I've started to appreciate it. Not because it has a ridiculous battle rating of 9.7, although the new Harriers, when they come out, are going to be 9.7, and one of them is going to get AIM 9G. So in fact, the two Intri variants are going to get those, whereas the Premiums, I think they get a slightly different loadout. Suffice to say that this thing being 9.7 at the moment is currently the king, and I'm going to show you two matches today where things don't go as planned and where defensive flying can be applied uh, to help you survive getting hits on those things. Let's take a look at my stat card just to prove that I'm just an average player. There are far better content creators out there. Let's take away those naval helicopters and ships. And as you can see, 25 victories for 52 total battles, 49 deaths. That's not great compared to my 36 air targets uh, destroyed. But I've been having a, a you know average two, three kill matches so far. But I wanted to showcase a couple of other statistics. Anyway, battle rating 9.7. Should it change? Probably. Aidens are fantastic, and the red tops, well, they're impeccable, but this thing is an utter bus. But besides the point, let's get straight into the uh, match, I suppose. Climbing straight off the start is always a good idea. Climbing off the side always tends to work pretty well as well. That's okay, because we're at 6,200 metres, we're just entering muck, but uh, indicated airspeeds are only at 789 kilometres. That doesn't necessarily matter, we're going to pull off the afterburner for a little bit. And what we're doing is we're just scanning for targets. We'll make a brief turnaround in a second, but... Let's just say that the community has rather calmed down from this aircraft's first introduction. I remember everyone going over the statistics of the Lightning and how good it was and, and so on and so forth. And yes, there was a special model that did intercept a spy plane, although that is not the version we have currently in the game. And I will say, flying this thing is a bit of a challenge. She is a bit of a bastard to turn. I, I will admit, she is a complete and utter bus. I have no idea why I'm alt tabling here. I don't know what was important on my second monitor at this point in time, but suffice to say that there is a Japanese Sabre that has pulled vertical, and he's fired a missile at one of the, I guess, the Hunters up the top. Well, his missile's gone absolutely nowhere. The Hunters outmaneuvered him, and now the Sabre is gone. Hmm, I can easily pull up with that, not realizing that I'm coming in for a kill. And there you go, that is the first kill of the match. Suffice to say, this thing is a beast when it's done right. F-100s tend to be the bane of your existence, however, especially at 9.7. When you get a full, uh, or your top tier vehicle, you tend to really dominate because nothing can really out-accelerate you aside from an F-104. But that's not really important because the first missile comes by, completely and utterly misses. There's an F-100 with the infamous Dozer 15, everyone knows who he is. And we're going to roll over to try and take out this F-100. Now, F-100s are particularly good. They're a pain in the rear. We're going to cook up a missile when we fire off our red top, and they're fantastic missiles. Note, as the hunter flies directly in front of me, barely misses that other missile. Technically, that is our second missile miss. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get a shot, but that other sound you just heard was another missile coming for us, so technically we've dodged three missiles already, even though the other one wasn't necessarily aimed for us. And as you can see in the background, those little triangles showing you the missiles, highly highly advise that you keep a watch on your surroundings unlike me who's not really focused there we go now we're focusing we're getting chased by two f11s and he fires what appears to be the fourth missile i missed that one as well my goodness me it's only going to be a missile fest from here on out well we've got another one you can't not have another one we roll over and continue in a straight direction that f100 launches one so we'll just wait for it to sort of come directly towards us we'll, we'll sort of maneuver it Right, we've maneuvered out of the way, and then we missed the other F-100's missile as well. Again, using defensive flying in sort of a technique that uh, involves just rolling the aircraft over and maneuvering the elevator up and down. And there we go, missed another one. <laughs> how, may, how many is that now? I, I, I've lost count at this point in time. Well, it's suffice to say that we're still getting chased and we're reaching our top speed. I am very cautious of the fact that there might be a mountain in front of me, but the missiles aren't over just yet. Just wait, we're just baiting them out yet. Okay, here's another one. Unfortunately, I don't turn as hard this time, and I do take a bit of damage. That knocks out one of my engines, or at least the cooling ability for one of my engines. That's okay, she took it like a champ. I will lose a bit of speed, and I will make a few crucial mistakes here. But here is our next missile, and the last missile that we'll see today. We do manage to miss it, and now it's a matter of avoiding these guys coming in, because now that they can catch me, I'm at a lower speed. Actually, no, there's another missile. <laughs> Never mind. The F-100 is catching me like nobody's business, which means that uh, I can't necessarily outrun these guys. 
anymore. Anyhow, we are now going to avoid the first F100 and then we're going to absolutely get nailed by the second one who has all the energy as I've completely burned it all trying to avoid the first aircraft and as you can see here he gets lucky shot like that, rips my wing off. So yes, if you count 11 missiles that were directly fired or 10 missiles fired at me, that is quite a lot of missile potential that could have been used on my friendly teammates rather than myself. Although at 9.7 you are facing stuff that has AIM-9Bs rather than the later variants, so it necessarily doesn't matter. You know, I fire one of the red tops, this F-86 clearly isn't watching his six, gets absolutely destroyed. We're in the second match now. I could easily have gunned shipped this F-86 down or launched a missile directly on him. Load factor too high. And again, when I push my button, it's a bit too late. Uh, I fired the missile ahead of him. He's already gone. I should have saved that for another aircraft. But that's okay. And as you can say, this thing is continuously sort of... You're putting yourself in a in, in the most opportune positions. It is, it's, it is incredibly quick in a straight line. It, does, it takes a good two, three kilometers to turn around. And as you'll see in this match, I'm trying to push this thing to help my teammates out. And again, rolling around is particularly annoying. I was going to go after that A4B, but that friendly got him, that J29. There's an F86 down below, but by the time I turn around to try and engage him, it will be a bit too late. So we're going to take out this F11 instead. But again, no air-to-air -air missiles, and we've only got 240 rounds of 30mm cannon. I am using stealth rounds, however, so hitting anything with any sort of degree is going to be a bit of a pain. Now, first missile has come in, and the F-3H has completely underestimated the fact that, oh, well, this thing's top speed is about 1,200 kilometers an hour, and, you know, it's not necessarily going to matter if you fire a missile at this thing. You're only going to get lucky if you'll be beyond or below the two kilometer mark when firing off a missile at least. Then I ain't going to fly off into the ocean because I know this is where this aircraft does best. All of a sudden, out of the blue comes another F-11. Seems to be the favorite choice for the 9.0 lineup at least. I, I quite like my F-11. I'm probably using it to grind out my Americans when I get the chance, but I'm sort of hovering around my top speed trying not to rip the aircraft to pieces. As you can see, my team is just falling apart because the concentration of their aircraft, well, are better than mine. Let's pull away from the gameplay at the moment because I really want to talk about this thing's potential. Obviously, when the Harrier gets introduced, it's going to change the meta a little bit. There's going to be probably a couple of videos. I might even make some when the new patch arrives in the next couple of weeks. But as you can see, it's sort of a bit of a, a missed opportunity here. 9.7 currently is dominated by what? F-100s and these things. So when you get that up tier, you're always thrown against MiG-21s and F-4 Phantoms, which is not such a fun experience in my opinion. This thing is a lumbering turd and probably doesn't deserve 9.7, considering it can outrun basically everything. But it's also incredibly hard to actively engage and support your team. You're looking at basically flying in firing a missile or doing a small gun run and then scooting off into space before turning around after about four kilometers and engaging at your will. That provides a problem when you're trying to support your teammates. As you can see that J29 is like, oh, I'm just going to fly under this lightning. Yeah, I can't really get shots on anything unless I really try hard. That's a problem when I'm doing, <laughs> I'm getting the reduced speed warning as well. So I'm going to pull up, I'm going to reduce that top speed and again, double check our surroundings. Unfortunately, we've only got a super mystere now. This is where things tend to get a bit spicy. Defensive flying is not an option here. What you've got to do is try and outrun your opponent. Good thing this thing has such a high top speed. But at 9.7, is this thing really worth it? Not really. And with the new Harriers, this thing is going to be second to anything else that you see upcoming in the next patch. I do believe, however, that this aircraft was a little late to the addition of War Thunder. It should have been in its own sort of patch. For example, when the T2 was added, that's perfect time for the Jaguar to be added. It was also a perfect time for, you know, the, the MiG-19 versus F-100 debacle. Although, at the same time as when the F-100 and the MiG-19 were king of the top-tier jets, it was still a fun, new, fascinating experience. Jets as a whole weren't, you know, fully developed into the spam rams that it is now. But suffice to say that... Uh, 
I don't know. It's sort of lost its magic touch. Playing a MiG-21 now was actually a massive pain. And if you don't have anything but an F4E, bloody hell, you're going to struggle just a little bit. Now, I wouldn't say Jets as a whole has lost its touch, but it certainly feels that way after playing so many 9.7, 10.0, and, and 10.7 matches. I, for the most part, are trying to unlock a great deal of aircraft. I've only got 24 aircraft left to unlock in this current patch, at least. When the new patch goes live, I think I'll have something like 28 or 29 or even 30 aircraft left to unlock, which is a pain in the rear, but again, they're catering to the top tier audience. Now, one of the people in the chat said, doesn't your tea get cold up there, bud? And this is the ironic thing. He's talking about the fact that I'm running away from combat while the rest of my team has basically collapsed around me. My response is, nope, but it does take four kilometers to turn this bitch around. And it's true. Just look at it. It's a monstrosity. A gorgeous monstrosity at that. I have no idea what the, <laughs> the company behind the Lightning specifically was smoking, but I want some of that. As you can see, the Super Mysteria has died, and there is no way that I could have been in the position in order to really effectively engage a target and either end the match or, you know, possibly help the, the team essentially win. And that is a bit of a problem with this thing. Yes, it's a fantastic aircraft. Yes, it's an interceptor primarily. But its role as a tactical interceptor fighter is really convoluted in that the fact that it's really not that useful in War Thunder at all which is why probably 9.7 suits it although I disagree with its battle rating considering it does kind of stomp under the right hands obviously War Thunder is not really suited for the lightning there is no T-95 there is no B-52 there is no sort of heavy bombers heavy attackers and interceptor fighters for this thing to really uh, I guess go hand in hand with the Lightning itself is, don't get me wrong, is a fantastic interceptor. That is what its role is designed for. But defending a country against even a regular sort of team deathmatch gameplay is not really helpful towards your team at all. I'm probably should be dead right now. That F-11 should have gunned me down, but I'm not necessarily going to give him the kill. But the lack of things like your Vulcan, your B-36, your B-52, and, and so many other interesting aircrafts that came out of the 60s and 70s, and particularly early 50s with the advent of the jet age, is really sort of lacking, especially considering that we're going further and further past the point of no return. In my opinion, War Thunder should have stopped at basically where we were with the F-100 and the MiG-19 PT. If anything, if they were going to consider branching out, they should have done what Naval is going through at the moment, a bit of a renaissance. They're splitting up the tech trees. Go Korea War for 1950, and then split the tech trees up, and then continue to add aircraft after that. Because the reality of War Thunder is we're going to get more and more advanced aircraft systems. And that's not a bad thing. We're going to get the Tornadoes, we're going to get different Mirages, we're probably going to get the F-14 and F-16, and a whole host of other crazy aviation developments. But suffice to say that tech trees are not going to be so linear now uh, as technology continues to be added. Which is why I think Golden Spot at the moment is 9.7. Anyway, the other guy on the enemy team is getting annoyed that I am taking an Eon to end the game with myself in it. I hit him with the K, and then he said, that thing is one ugly version of the MiG-21. Not going to disagree, it is ugly, but it's beautiful uh, uh, as well. And I responded, you're going to kill me or what? You know, I'm putting all the maneuvers into slowing down my aircraft and making sure they have every opportunity to kill me. I can't necessarily do anything. I've got no air-to-air -air missiles. I've got no guns left. So, essentially, this is a glorified paperweight that can do Mark 2 or Mark 3, if you really push it. <laughs> or Mark 1. I'm not entirely sure the top speed of this thing. With four minutes of fuel left, I'm sort of going to head back towards the airfield, but, uh, again, there's no guarantees on this thing's survival either. And as you can see, I'm pulling all the maneuvers. That F-86, all he has to do is kill me. Come on, mate. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. There he goes. He finally manages to do it. So, closing up, we ended the match. Obviously, we died and we lost, but we got some interesting points. And 7,000 research isn't too sloppy for a match that went for 12 minutes. And is the Lightning relevant in 2020? Well, it was earlier this year, but when the new patch comes out, when 9.7 changes up with multitudes of Harriers and VTOL aircraft? Probably not. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. My name is Ash. I hope to see you in the next one, and uh, catch you next time. Bye-bye.